Hey guys, welcome to day one of your workout. This will be the same workout. You're gonna do it twice this week, but you're just gonna have different focuses. On day one, it's gonna be all about understanding how your body moves, how you move your body, how you feel in your body. So it's okay if things take longer than I say in the video. It's okay if you don't do as many reps. It doesn't have to be fast. It doesn't have to feel strong. It's really all about you leaving feeling like you learned something about your body and how to move it so it's more enjoyable, more fun, and easier to play. I hope you really enjoy today's workout and you really can focus on how am I moving my body? Am I enjoying moving my body? Can't wait to hear. Hello everyone, my name is Mora. My name is Haley. And we are going to run your warm up today. We will be starting with some mobility, moving into some body movements just to get all warmed up, and then we'll jump right into the workout. Let's do it. For today's mobility, we are gonna start with the neck mobility. We'll then work into cat cow. We'll move on to 90-90, and then a big toe stretch. Exciting. So for the <laughs> neck mobility, you're going to want to sit or sit up straight. Um, shoulders back, you don't wanna be hunching over like this. So you wanna sit up straight and just have a proper posture. And you're going to let your neck lightly and slowly lean down and stretch your neck out. You're gonna rotate starting from the front, have your chin touch your chest, and have your other ear to your shoulder and all the way back. We're gonna do this three times clockwise. Two. And three. The next movement is going to be our cat cow. So, your cat cow, you'll get on your fours, arms and knees, and cat looks just like that Halloween cat. Your back, you're stretching your spine, and it's upward. And then cow <laughs> will be stretching downward. You're gonna throw out a little moo in there? Yeah. <laughs> just go. <laughs> and we're gonna do this 10 times. So we're gonna go through cat, cow, 10 times. The importance of this mobility in your warm up is just to be able to understand how your body feels, what it feels like through the movements, where you're restricted, and just take note of what might feel good or maybe what you're not ready for yet. And we're just going to do three more. Okay. The next mobility movement will be our 90-90. And so you're going to sit down on your bum. Your one leg will be right in front of you and be a 90 degrees. And then your second leg behind you will also be at 90 degrees. The goal for this is so that you are flat on your bum and you don't move. I'm going the wrong way, so I'm gonna switch. <laughs> okay, so the goal is to be flat on your bum so you don't move, you're sitting up straight, you want to keep that posture. And you're going to twist, open up your hips, and make it to the other side. You don't want your legs to be too, too wide. You just want your legs to open the width of your hips. If you're having a hard time sitting up straight and keeping that bum on the ground, you may have to lightly lean back. You can use your hands to support you to make it through and back. So let's just do this two more times. 
You can really feel that <laughs> stretch in your hip. And one more. And again, feel that stretch. Don't push it too far, but just let your body sit in it and feel that mobility. The second part of the 90-90 is we're actually going to be able to lay down. So you're gonna to wanna to stay in your 90-90 and just lay down. Or lay down and then get in your 90-90. There's no difference. And right now, your back won't be flat necessarily to the ground, but you're just going to move your legs in similar motion to when you were sitting up and you're going to let your body stretch, let your abdomen twist, what feels good and maybe what you're not ready for yet. And we're just going to do it two more times. One. And two. Okay. So our last mobility move for the warm up is called the big toe stretch, which I know is kind of hilarious a little bit um, but the point of the big toe stretch is actually that you're going to have your foot feet both of them sorry right on the toes so this is how your foot is going to hang out most of the time and you're going to bring one leg forward I'll start with my left so my left leg forward so now you're at a 90 with both your legs one's in front one's in the back and your toes are tucked under you're going to lightly, slowly and controlled, sit back onto that heel and you're going to feel a stretch. Fire. Yeah, toes on <laughs> fire, hammies, calves, you're just going to feel that stretch. Let your body lightly sit in it, don't force it down, just lightly sit. If you need to use your hands to support you, support that and then you can come up. And let's do that again on the same side. We're going to lightly sit back and you're just going to let your body sit there. Again, pay attention to what feels good. Mobility should not be painful. You should just be able to feel that release and we'll go back. We're going to switch legs. So the leg that was originally in the front will now go to the back with your big toe propped. And my right leg is gonna come up and we're gonna do the same. Slow and controlled, we're gonna sit back. Don't forget to use your hands, keep you stable if you'd like. If it's not needed, that's cool. <laughs> Good balance, that'll come later. I'll definitely be slicing my hands. <laughs> <laughs> and just work to get that stretch. We'll do it one more time. Perfect. So that is our mobility section of the warm up. We're going to start moving into actually getting warm and we'll be moving to our kicks and our animal walks. So our kicks, if you can get possibly, I'm going to use a wall. You can use a wall, you can use a chair, a desk, a counter, whatever's best for you. And it's kind of fun, reminds me of when I was a kid a little bit. And you're just going to let your leg dangle and hang. And you're going to move it. It doesn't matter how high it goes. This isn't a height competition. <laughs> you're just going to take it lightly and just let your body move. And kind of swing it the way it wants to swing back and forth and you should feel your heart rate starting to pick up a bit more than the mobility and you should start getting warm and then we're going to switch legs same position arms holding on and lightly swinging it's kind of fun <laughs> it's a little goofy 
but you're going to notice that your heart rate will start picking up. And you're going to start getting warm. And then we are going to get into our animal walks. Um, I personally love animal walks. It also kind of brings me back to like my childhood and my youth. There's really no perfect animal walk. That's kind of what's so cool about them. You don't have to worry about your form. Just let your body move the way it wants to. Um, so there are a few different um, placements, let's say, but really you can just make them up. Um, we like to call this one bear crawl. You could do an army crawl. Um, you could do a crab walk. Yeah, you could go from here to here. You can jump a little bit. And this is literally what we're both just gonna go through. Like this. Bear crawl's one of my favorite. <laughs> Crab walk. Ooh, oh man. And we're just gonna get warm. <laughs> okay, after about 30 to 45 seconds of that, <laughs> we're out of breath. Whew. I'm sweating. Are you sweating? Already, yeah, of course. Sweating. <laughs> and we are going to move into woo, our seated roll which Ooh, my favorite <laughs> it's my favorite. Absolute favorite so you can either sit cross or you can sit with your two whew, feet right in front of you we're gonna bring our heart rate a little bit back down take a few breaths to catch that I truly am sweating you're gonna hold on to your feet or if you wanted to cross your legs, you can hold on this way. It's completely up to you. Whatever's most comfortable. And literally, your seated row, uh, roll, <laughs> sorry, is you're gonna roll. Kind of like an egg. Oh, like a little bit of a Humpty Dumpty. Oh. <sighs> yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> I'm just doing this at my house all the time. Some Ooh. people might call this popcorn. Uh, I like to think of Humpty Dumpty a little bit more. I definitely feel like Humpty Dumpty more than Oh my that. god! <laughs> Sometimes it's harder to get up. Oh. I'm gonna go for another round. Oh no! <laughs> it's almost hard. just as hard to get down as it is to get up. you're done rolling around your living room or your bedroom or wherever you're trying this warm up at we're gonna sit here and you can have your legs in the same position you can have your legs shake down straight we're gonna sit up straight a little bit and we're gonna do three solid deep breaths everybody's breath sounds different don't be worried about being loud or sounding too deep. Um, I was practicing my breaths earlier, so <laughs> we're just gonna do two super deep inhales and exhales. You can control it or you can just oh, let it out. So we're gonna do three together. Thank you so much I hope you guys feel warm and you're ready to get into your workout that's right you're not done yet <laughs> we just started the beginning. again I am Maura I'm Haley and thank you for joining the warm-up and we'll see you in the cool down awesome 
Hey guys, welcome to your second week of working out. I hope that uh, the warm up felt a bit more comfortable. The whole point of doing the same warm up every single week is going to be to gain some consistency, and that's how you tell if you're getting more in shape or you feel healthier. So I hope you enjoyed the warm up. I hope it's feeling a bit more comfortable. Today we're going to be focusing on core, and that's going to be what week two is going to be all about. So we're going to head into movement prep right away, and Mora's going to demo for us. So the first thing we're going to do is actually called shoulder floats. So you're going to stand in that tree pose, you're going to zip up your core right up to your diaphragm again, and you're actually going to pinch, you're going to feel like you're pinching something in between your armpit and your body. So for girls, maybe you're holding up a dress, maybe for some boys that wear dresses, you're holding up a dress. And what you're going to do is from here, you're going to float your arms up straight and like you're lifting from your back. So you don't want to be engaging your top muscles. And you're going to float back down and your arms should feel really, really light. Then you can go out to the side and it's going to be the same thing. You're going to really focus on floating, lifting from that back, not the top of the arm and coming down. So you want to feel a burn in the back of your body, not in the top of your shoulders. So you're going to do this 10 times. Maybe you're only going to do it one time. Maybe your arm's already burning. Take a break, reset, do it again. So you're going to do two sets of shoulder floats. Perfect. After you're done shoulder floats, you're going to go down to the floor and you're going to do what's called bird dog floats. So you're going to get in this nice tabletop position. You don't want your back to be too sunken down and you don't want it to be too rounded up. Those are the two common things. You want it to be flat so someone could put a plate of dinner right here and it wouldn't fall over. That's, that's the goal. Maybe by the end of the three months you'll be able to do that. And all you're going to do is you're going to focus on that floating motion as well without moving your hips and without moving your shoulders. So you're not going to tip at all. So Maura's just going to show us very beginner. You're going to slowly pick up your arm it might only look that much. Perfect, put it back down. Other arm. Very small motion, as you can see, there's no movement here. Float back down. Let's see the legs. Really good, limited, awesome, good. Next one. Really good, right there, perfect. So, the tendency is to just lift with your big muscles. Give us, show us what that looks like, Maura. So you just lift right up with your big muscles. What we're doing with your core is we're focusing on all the little muscles because your core is actually understanding the space in your body and how you can move in it and rotate. So these are gonna be our little tiny muscles. And if you really want, you can do uh, one arm, one leg. If you feel like you're ready. As you can see, she's a little more shaky with this one, looks good. And this is going to be the same thing, until it burns um, and until you feel activated. That's the whole point of movement prep. Awesome. Okay. The last one is actually going to be us learning our um, rotation in our spine. Okay. So that's a big part. If you have a healthy core, you can move well. So this is called elbow to the sky. You're going to be in that tabletop position again. You're going to put your hand on the back of your neck. Elbow points out straight. She's going to bring her elbow right down underneath her body, sweep it down underneath and then sweep it right to the sky and try and look forwards. Perfect, go down. And this, you wanna get a really nice stretch, go back up. And you're gonna do this about 15 times because you really just wanna move your body so both sides more can switch. Because you really just wanna get that internal body moving around. A lot of times our organs get stuck, our lungs get stuck, and this is just getting us out of that position. So you can do this as many times as you'd like, but 15 is kind of an ideal number. Awesome. We're going to head into our drills. Remember, as you go through the video, you might need to pause to get your reps in. So our drills, we're going to start with our t-shirt drill once again. This is going to be the staple of all your workouts. So you're always going to have a t-shirt on you. And this week, we're going to focus on something a little different. So whenever we're doing anything athletic, we're thinking about our core. Our core is actually our shoulder, right to our hip, across to our other hip, up to our other shoulder. So it's actually a big rectangle. Today, all you're gonna focus on is moving that rectangle forwards so it's in line with your feet as you go. And on the last one, your rectangle is gonna face a wall. 
So more is going to step into the neckline. Perfect. Step out. Step into the other neckline. Perfect. Let's go shoulder, shoulder. Boom. That's armpit. Other armpit. Good. Shoulder, shoulder. So you'll face forward. Boom. Nice. There you go. Shoulder, shoulder. Good. And then you're going to do shoulder and face the wall. Perfect. Other side. And shoulder face. Awesome. So last week we talked a lot about our footwork. This week we're going to pair our footwork with understanding that rectangle. So you're going to do it um, three times through to both sides. And, uh, and then you'll be done with that drill. We're going to move into our animal walks. So this is going to be very similar to our warm up. But we're actually going to explain it a little more. So animal walks is what helps you understand how your core holds you and then actually how you can move with it. So we have two levels here. You're either going to be beginner or you're going to be ready to explore. So for some of us, it might be really hard to just be in this position. This is we're just working on our body holding us. For other people, it's going to be really difficult to go into the crab walk position. Maybe we're going to be here, and we're just going to be working on, and this might be your whole drill, is just moving back and forth to these positions. Another one is coming from your hands and knees, and coming up here. Just moving from your knees to a half knee. That might be a workout for you. That might be the drill you need to do. Okay? Another one, you might want to be here and dip through. And just holding this is just a real hard workout for you. And you're just working on the holds. If you feel like, yeah, I've done this before or I, I'm all warmed up, you can actually do the explore part. So we're going to make Maura sweat a little bit here. And she's just going to show you, you're just going to explore the movements and really understand your core holding you and rotating you. So you can do this for five seconds. You can do this for 30 seconds. It's really up to you. With drills, you always want to do it, take a break, do it again. So two to three sets. Nice. Really good. Perfect. So as you can see, Maura has done this a few, a few times as a wrestler, you can tell. Right on. Okay. So your last drill for your core is actually going to be um, headstands, teddy bear stands, basically going upside down. So. When you're thinking about your core, you want to be able to. <laughs> Morris watch is talking. About. You want to be able to uh, put your core sideways, right side up, upside down, twist. So all those sort uh, sort of things, so you can understand your core. So for those of you that maybe haven't gone upside down in 20 to 30 years, you're just going to start hands and knees, and really you're just going to dip your head down and just make sure that you feel okay there. If you feel okay there, you can push backwards. If you feel okay there, you can push your bum up. And that's, that might be where you start. And so for all the stands, you're just gonna be doing it for time. So you can do it for one second, five seconds, 15 seconds, 30 seconds. It's really just how long your head can handle it because you're kind of practicing this upside down motion. Um, same thing, it's a drill. So you're gonna do it two to three times. For people that feel like they might be a little bit ready to see what it's like to go upside down, you're going to clasp your hands and create a little cushion for your head to go into. So Maura's going to do this, she's going to go down, and she's just going to see how she feels there. So this might be all you can do, because you're just working on that mobility in your spine, just holding that might be enough. If you feel like, no, I can put more pressure in, you can push up on your neck a little bit, right up, see how she pushes her bum up. And you might feel like, okay, that feels pretty good. And you're going to do that two to three times. For people that are ready for a teddy bear stand, that's going to be the next step. We actually put our hands out wide so that we can put our heads down. We click our butt, we uh, walk our feet up. Just like this, you can put one leg to your knee, you can put the other leg to your knee until you're balanced. And here you can play with putting your legs straight, putting them wide, moving them around. I love doing stands. I think they're so much fun and they're such an applicable way to do your core. The last one is for those people who are really into sort of handstands, headstands. 
You could do a handstand against the wall. Same thing, you could bring your legs straight, put them out like a table, bring them wide, so you can play around with your leg height and your leg width um, as you do it. And so you're gonna do this two to three times. Uh, make sure to take a break in between and you're monitoring how your body feels. So that's all of your drills for your core. We'll be moving into our strength and conditioning now. So this is the part where your, your, your muscles, your big muscles are gonna burn and uh, make sure to pause the video as you go so you can get your reps in. So the exercise for today is gonna be what we call roll ups. And this is so that you can understand your core from sitting to standing. So Mora's actually gonna be right here. She's gonna be on her toes actually, here. So you can see her feet, she's on her toes. And she's actually gonna tighten her core and she's gonna roll up onto her feet. Boom, just like that. Sometimes, and go back down. Sometimes you might lose balance and you're just gonna have to step to the side a little. You might not land as firm, so Mora's gonna roll up and she might need to step perfect. So it's gonna look different. You're gonna do, once again, you're gonna do one to 10 to 20 of these, depending on kind of how fit you feel. Good. You're gonna take a break, and then you're gonna do three sets. So feel free to pause the video and give this a try. After you're done your roll-ups, you're actually gonna do your roll-up sequence. And so what this is gonna look like Maura's gonna give herself some room here. You're gonna roll up, step forward, fold down into a plank, perfect. And then you're just gonna come back up. <laughs> Good. And then if you wanted to make it a little bit harder, you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna roll up, step forward, plank, and then you're gonna walk your hands back so you get a kind of stretch in your legs and you work that core in a different direction. So you're gonna do one to five to 10 each leg, take a break, and then do three sets. So one more time, you roll up, step forward, bend down, shoot back. Good, perfect. For some of our more, um, maybe our younger participants or some of our athletes, this could look very dynamic if you really want to be getting into it. Maybe people that have done yoga before. You can roll right up, step forward, shoot down, walk up, come down, roll up, step forward, shoot back, walk up. So you can do it quite quickly or slowly. It's really dependent on your fitness level. Our last exercise before we head into our cool down is going to be our plank series. Once again, this is gonna be for holding time. So you can do one second, five seconds, uh, 20 seconds, and so on. When you get to a high performance level, so you wanna to go to university sport, you wanna be able to do a two minute plank hold. That's actually the standard to make sure that your back is safe. That's what everyone's usually going towards. So when you plank, we'll just show you the basics first. More is gonna go down, elbows down, knees up. As you can see, hips are down, so you can put a plate on her back again, shoulders flat. So this is the biggest thing. Someone could touch you in the stomach and you feel strong. So this is the first plank. Then she's gonna move to her side plank. So she just rolls up. Good. Same thing, there's a lot of space in between her and the ground. She's pushing that hip to the ceiling. She can roll back down and go to the other side. So this is usually considered a series. Really good, and then she's gonna go into her reverse plank, which you actually just go down onto your back. You're gonna pick your bum up. You, it's called stacking onto your shoulders, so your shoulders should feel flat. Your bum should feel tight, and if you have a sibling or someone doing the workout with you, you can get them to come by and hit you in the stomach, and it should feel pretty tight, like it's hard to move you around. That's how you know you got a good reverse plank going. And this, once again, is just for holding time. So you're gonna do three sets of, of each one. So you can do it for one second, five seconds, 10 seconds, a minute. If you're a real champion out there, <laughs> I could not do that. And that's your workout for today. I hope you enjoy it. Enjoy your cool down. Hey 
guys, it's us again, and we are about to start the cool down. You have completed your workout of the day, and we're going to bring our heart rates back down to our rested numbers. You've worked hard, you're sweaty, and you're ready to just sum it all up. For our cool down, we are going to start with a stand up spine roll, lay down twist to each side, then we are going to move to knees to chest circles. And we're really going to end it with a few affirmations for our workout today. So to start, we're going to stand up straight with our stand up spine roll. Posture. Right. <laughs> and we're going to slowly <laughs> lower our heads and then slowly simply roll forward and straight down. This is a personal favorite. I have a very bad lower back and I really get that stretch at the end of a workout. I always forget to breathe in this, so make sure you're always breathing. It's a very good tip. And you just want to kind of dangle. If you can't have your legs straight, use your knees, bend your knee a little bit, allow your body to reach to the ground. You can move to the right. You can move to the left. And just really pay attention to what your body's feeling right now after that really good workout. And we're gonna roll back up. Nice and slow. We're gonna do it three times total, so two more. And we're gonna go back down. Nice and slow. Whew. Feel it the second time for sure. Yeah. You can cross your arms and let the arms dang, like cross and just hold them there. Sometimes I find that's a little comfortable. Use your knees, remember if you don't, if you aren't comfortable straight in your legs yet, And you can go from side to side, kind of move your hips a little to get that nice stretch. And you're going to work your way back up slowly. <sighs> and one more. And slowly back down. You kind of look like one of those... Uh, those car decal decals outside <laughs> of like car furniture stores and they have like the air the like, inflatable balloon yeah balloon. yeah <laughs> we have no air right now <laughs> we're tired from our workout yeah and just let that stretch really pay attention to how good that feels and we're gonna work our way slowly up We get into our lay down twist so you will lay down on your back feet in front of you arms to the side you're going to lift one leg knee to chest and take that knee across and you're gonna hold it here and just feel that sometimes you'll get a pop a crack and you're just gonna let your back and your abdomen just lay twisted. You want your opposite arm to lay down. And pay attention to your breathing and the stretch and just hold it here. We're gonna move straight to our back, switch legs, leg up to your knee, take your opposite hand and bring your knee over. Have that arm straight out, twist your body and just hold it there and just breathe.
<laughs> We're just really enjoying the stretch, guys. This is good. Oh, wow, yep. Ooh. And you're going to bring that leg back. And forward. And you can sit up. The last cool down exercise we're going to do is knees to chest circles. So we're actually going to lay back down, have both of our knees up to our chests. Um, and then we're going to wiggle around in little circles. So we're laying back down, knees to chest. You can clamp over, you can clamp under. Under's more comfortable for me right now. And we're just gonna make little circles with our back and our bodies. Little circles. And just feel. I know sometimes I think mine's more like a square with how my hips move, but <laughs> <laughs> we're doing it. That's all that matters, right? We're doing it. <laughs> Little circle. We're getting that movement. You want to keep your back flat to the ground. <laughs> as many circles as you can get. <laughs> Just feeling that tension leave. is our cool down oh and now we're gonna go through um, some important affirmations to really talk to yourself in a proper way uh, be thankful for your body and what you did today um, so we're gonna go over three specific affirmations and we really encourage you to do the same uh, share them with us if you'd like so we're gonna go through what did you do well what are you proud of? And what's something you want to improve? Um, so I will go first. What did I do well? Um, I felt like I worked on my footwork really well. That was great. Um, yeah. Today I'm going to choose that I worked on my footwork really well. I liked, um, I think my favorite that I did well was the t-shirt exercise. Mm, that's one of my favorites too. Um, I am proud of myself for showing.